What's up future athletes? So I got this Popeye shirt sent to me by the one and only, and I thought, why not use it for a video? So a while back, I remember seeing this Wendy's employee training video where it was just them rapping. It's up to me. Cold drinks come in for cups, gotta know the size before you fill it up. And that got me thinking, why not see what other fast food training videos are like and rank them on a scale from one to a trillion. I actually found this channel who has uploaded over a hundred employee videos from fast food to OSHA. So thank you to whoever made this. You just made my video a whole lot easier. But the training videos we're gonna look at today are Hardee's, KFC, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Jack in the Box, Chuck E. Cheese, Burger King, and Subway. I did try and find a Popeye's training video, but apparently they knew their employees knew that a kitchen is supposed to be clean and people wanted their food correct. Who would have thought? Now I do wanna say these are all from the 80s and 90s because I think just telling someone that a kitchen is meant to be clean and people want their food correctly is more than enough. But anyways, let's start off with the Hardy slash Carl's Jr. training video. A big day today. Get your coffee for you here, and we'll see you that you get on your way. There we go. There you are, Peter. Thank you. We get a lot of customers like Peter who are regulars. That's crazy. I think now, if an employee knows your name, it's time to go on a diet. To become the public's favorite takes good food, cleanliness, and good service. Good service involves much more than just getting food from the back line to the customer. It means serving the customer. It means seeing your restaurant as your customer does. Now it's crazy to see how far fast food dining has declined since then. I mean, we went from basically like a family dinner away from home to a depressing wasteland of homeless people who are just clean enough to eat inside. The customer's first impression of Hardee's is formed before he even comes in the door. The way the grounds around your restaurant look can affect a customer's appetite. The times that form lasting impressions of Hardee's in our customers' minds are our moments of truth. I'm gonna be honest, the only time I've ever seen a parking lot that clean is when I'm at a fast food place in the middle of nowhere, and even then, the employees look like they're straight out of the hills have eyes. No offense, actually all the offense. You'll find that if you learn the names of your regular customers and greet them by name, they'll appreciate it and will remember you too. Hey. Customers are turned off by a greeting that sounds like a memorized speech. I don't think these people have ever seen Good Burger and realize how catchy it is to say, Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? Customer's first impression of you is a crucial Hi, moment of truth. Take your order, please. When the customer arrives, don't wait for him to talk. Smile and greet him. Make him feel welcome. Look pleasant. Remember, you're making a first impression. I also think the more I watch this that Chick-fil-A is just having their employees watch these things because these these are all stuff that Chick-fil-A would do, not no damn Hardee's. How about a big deluxe sandwich and an apple turnover? What's on a big deluxe? Okay, get mayonnaise, pickles, lettuce, Suggestive selling can often help the customer. Other appropriate times are when you smile and greet him, or after you finish taking the order. Pay attention to what the customer says while ordering, so you're sure you're getting the order right. Yo, did y'all hear that? Let me, let me run that back for y'all. Pay attention to what the customer says while ordering. Pay attention to what your customer says. When I say a burger, I don't mean a chicken fucking sandwich. The assembly procedure is different for takeout orders. But we still began by preparing the drinks. Sometimes, though, a customer will request that they be put in a bag. Hey, yo, what? I don't think I've... Uh, is that something people at Hardee's do? Because they go on to say, don't put more than four drinks in a bag. When that happens, be sure to put the drinks in a bag that will hold them securely. And never put more than four drinks in one bag. Yo, four drinks in a bag is crazy. I'd rather take the chance of holding them all in my lap than being stacked on top of, in, in, uh, of each other in the side of a paper bag. I glitched right there. When a customer spills something, try to lessen his embarrassment, replace what was dropped without charge, and clean it up right away. Sometimes you'll be asked to give advice or directions. Here too, you can show good service by being courteous. I feel like that advice is only good for the first time because after the 10th time of cleaning up someone's mess, I feel like being courteous is just thrown out the window. Especially if it's a child, if a child makes a mess. All right, drive forward. Drive forward, drive forward, drive fucking forward. Thank God. Jim, you know how people respond to your smile on the front line? Yes. Well, when you work the drive through station, people can't see your smile. They have to hear it. Hear it? Listen here, Jim. This is the 80s, and people would rather find out you're black after they place their order. So you're getting promoted to drive through Now, unless your customers specifically ask you to, don't deliver a partial food order. See, it's always better if a food order is delivered all at once. What is up with Hardee's and all these weird demands? Why would anyone want their food brought out to them separately? Yeah, can you bring out my drinks first, but make sure you stack them inside of a paper bag, and then bring my food pre-chewed, and then spit it in my mouth like a mama bird would? Hardee's, you are a weird one, but you've lasted this long, so I won't question you. 5,450,679.
on the truck. Next up, we got the Colonel's very own training video. That's good chicken. Thanks. Zero. Let's go, roll the... Oh, I'm the... My bad. Now we got a McDonald's training video, and this one is weird because they're filming the training video as a training video. Hi, how can I help you? Whoa, cut. Hold it. Come on, that's the wrong line. Help me out here. You're supposed to say, hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? That's the way you always say it. Oh, Dave, sorry, but... That's my fault. Typical woman at fault again. First 9-11, now... Well, I was talking to Jim a little bit earlier, and he said that he was feeling really stiff having to say, welcome to McDonald's, welcome to McDonald's, over and over again. Dude was really complaining about saying, welcome to McDonald's, then don't work at McDonald's. You ever just see someone you could just openly commit hate crime on? You know we have our operations and training manual. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like your script. It, sure, sure. It tells us how to do things the right way at McDonald's. Well, I used to insist that all of my team do everything strictly by the book. You think your team tried to have her killed, but she found out, so she decided to never be a bitch again? She sounds like she had that, that may have happened to her. I mean, everything from the way they greeted the customer to how they took the order and so on. Well, I started to notice that everybody seemed a little stiff. I mean, really inflexible in the way they were serving the customers. And the customers weren't uh, particularly responsive either. Someone tell this lady she works at McDonald's and not Olive Garden. All the managers at McDonald's now look like me and smoke weed with their high school employees. Shut up and let's see this commercial. Hi, what can I get for you today? Yeah, I want a filet of fish, french fries, and a small Coke, and nothing else, okay? Well, will that be for here to go? Oh, no. Yo, negative 1,440 fuck. They actually do have another one, but this is all it is for some reason. Good afternoon. May I take your order, please? Now let's see what it takes so that no one out pizzas the hut. Okay, Julie, are you all ready to learn how to make a pizza the right way? Making it great. Yes, I'm ready. Are we going to cook pizzas now? Well, there's a lot more to it than just cooking. In fact, that's probably the easiest part. But let's start this process at the beginning. First of all, are your hands washed? <laughs> sure are. Sure are. Look, I don't have any poop on my hands. Good, mine too. All right, let's say an order for a pizza comes in. You'll read it, and you'll get started on the pizza-making process right away. You have to act fast. Just think, the sooner you get that pizza in the oven... The Pizza Hut on Frankfurt Avenue. The inspector wrote, Large accumulation of mouse feces on pizza boxes. I saw this Chuck E. Cheese one, and it was going good, and so halfway through, they just decided to add this. At my store, we set a timer every 15 minutes to remind us of Team Clean. When the timer goes off, one of us checks the ladies' room, and one of us checks the men's room. I like how he doesn't specify who has to check the ladies' room, but that's the only time to show that puppet. The rest is just a regular training video. One of us checks the beverage bar, and one of us fills the ice bin. Presto, it's always clean. Our restaurants have plenty of carpet that needs to be cleaned. Maybe like a five. Now let's see what the uh, king has to offer us. <laughs> King making paper whoppers, I would pay for hats. Would you like an apple pie with that? Yeah, obviously that's a one trillion. This next one is a subway training video, but after you see that they didn't use gloves whenever this was made, it only makes you appreciate the slop they serve now even more. And now for this last one, I swear to God, was the inspiration for the SpongeBob training video. You know, the one where they taught you about poop? Once you understand poop, you'll understand your place at the Krusty Krab. After watching this Jack in the Box one, I'm convinced that someone who's worked on SpongeBob also worked at Jack in the Box before that and they were able to access this video. To be successful in our business, you need quality food, great customer service, and an attractive and clean dining environment. It also takes a positive attitude on the part of all of us to maintain the high standards set by our company. These standards can be summarized in three simple words. Quality, service, and cleanliness. Oh? QSC. You see what I mean? This guy even sounds the same. Just add some SpongeBob commentary and you got the and that's the crusty crab training video. Quality food starts with fresh ingredients. If something looks old or spoiled, 
Don't use it. This is some bullshit. I can remember, and I've been a fat piece of shit for a long time, but every time I'd get something with lettuce from a fast food place, none of it would always be good. Unless I'm like going to In-N-Out. Other than that, I'm biting into whatever the fuck this is nine out of 10 times. Now, unlike the other videos, this one actually tells you what to wear and how to look. At Foodmaker, we dress in attractive uniforms that are designed to enhance our restaurant's image. The company will provide you with everything that a well-dressed employee needs, from jeans, to shirt or blouse, to apron, name badge and hat or visor. Yo, what was that girl's name? Diarrhea? Oh, it's Diana. Spelled in the most ridiculous way possible. Accessories such as protective aprons, goggles, and safety gloves must also be worn to protect you while performing certain cleaning tasks. Yo, they really had people suit up like that back then? What, is he gonna go cook meth with Walter White? Jesse, we need to clean. Mm. What? Oh, thank you, thank you, no, thank you. You must provide your own shoes, keeping a few important guidelines in mind. They should be dark colored, low heeled with a non-slip sole, closed toed, and above all, comfortable. Imagine if there was Vine back then, everyone would be like, what are those? What are those? What next? Sideburns must be kept short, at or above the bottom of the earlobe. Mustaches are acceptable, but must be neatly trimmed at the lip. Now, was that Josh from Good Mythical Morning? I think that's Josh from Good Mythical Morning. But yeah, guys, those were some of the fast food training videos I found. Jack in the Box is obviously at one trillion, and the rest are where they are. See you guys next week. Peace.